Welcome to the morning show. I'm your host, Buba Sananjay, on the panel. I have my friend, Sayo Mosila. Well, thank you very much for having me on this platform. Thank you. Okay, Sayo can you tell me more about yourself? Although I know you, being my friend, <laughs> schoolmate, yeah. doing everything together, hanging out every day, but the public need to know who is Sayo Mosila. All right, so thank you very much. I am Sayo Mosila, like you have correctly said. I'm part of the COVID-19 risk communication team of the Ministry of Health and uh, Ministry of Health, and um, my job at the, the communication unit is actually on uh, rumor mining and media monitoring. So um, that's part of my key responsibilities that I do actually at the Incident Command Center for COVID-19. That's great. And what's your educational background, Sayom? So I've got. Um, a higher national diploma distinction in public health from the Gambia College School of Public Health. And then I proceeded to the uh, University of the Gambia where I graduated with uh, summa cum laude uh, in public and environmental health. And then uh, briefly I traveled to do my master's degree in epidemiology and health statistics at the prestigious Wazhong University of Science and Technology, Tonji Medical College of China in Wuhan. Um, on my studies, actually, I had a brief break to come and do my, uh, my preliminary research uh, on um, cancer epidemiology in the Gambia. And then I got trapped with uh, the COVID-19. No. So actually, I, I, I couldn't go back. And I decided to just um, offer my services to my ministry, which is the Ministry of Health. Great. B was, this is a guy who was uh, doing public health at the University of the Gambia, where I studied political science and he has done a political science course with us, public policy analysis. And being a science student, he's got straight A in that, in, in, in that course. Oh, yes. And he has been bluffing. <laughs> being a science student, he's got straight A in pol political science course. Yeah. Then he can do political science. Oh, oh, of course, of course. I mean, I, I, I have an interest in a lot of political science courses. And then not, not only um, public policy analysis, which, of course, I, I was on top of the class. Um, I did other political science courses for, for, the, for my feeling of understanding more about politics. I mean, and because, you know, I have friends like you and, and other friends who are always bluffing me with the political jargon. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that has inspired me to just push up and also do my courses in political science. But I'm, I'm really happy that I've, I've got those grades and, and, and those courses on my transcript. I mean, I was <laughs> nearly tempted to jump into science because this guy will be telling me, boy, you know what? I'm going to attend epidemiology, <laughs> gynecology. I mean, those big words, those big courses, I want to do those things, right? So uh, let's talk about your work at the Ministry of Health and your fight against the COVID-19. What are you doing? Yeah, so that's, that's um, very important to ask. Um, what, what am I doing at the Ministry of Health currently? And I said, um, I'm part of the communication command. Um, we, we share information. Uh, Rick's communication is my job. So what we do daily is, or what I personally do daily is, uh, when I get to office, I try to do uh, some rumor mining, try to uh, fight against the infodemia that is circulating in our social media because it is not helping response efforts. So uh, I do rumor mining with, 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 with certain gadgets uh, that I have uh, uh, on me, on, on, on my computer, so to do uh, some, some of those information mining. And, and, and the other thing I also do is to fight very hard to dispel some of those rumors that are coming from the public space because it will not um, actually help the response efforts. When I try to move away from uh, or move around to different media houses, I'm trying to dispel some of those rumors, including you know the issues of uh, Gambia having vaccines from China and all that, which are actually not true. So pretty well, my job is to come out and see what is clear, what is actually not true when it comes to uh, COVID-19 in the Gambia. Great. Oh. Uh We've been talking about this. Uh, you've been telling me that during the political impasse, I was talking, I was loud on social media, doing political analysis when he was quiet because he didn't have expertise in politics. <laughs> so now it's your time to talk. Yeah. It's your yeah. time to do your analysis about, about, yeah. about yes. the pandemic. I, 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 yeah. but, but I have a chance today. I have seen the pandemic being an enemy to a democracy. I mean, it has to restrict our way to movement and even restricting our way to worship. What are the strategies that your ministry is doing in order to avert the COVID-19, to contain and avert it? 
So when it comes to disease containment, uh, including pandemics, it's, it's actually very important to know your response efforts. Uh, the Ministry of Health have uh, a comprehensive plan uh, on um, a response plan that, that they are actually uh, using to, to fight against COVID-19 in the country. So part of the response plan, we have specific strategies, including border surveillance. Uh, you talk about uh, you know, testing, talk about contact tracing, talk about you know, um, rapid response and all that. So there is a plan, there is a comprehensive uh, a master plan that is uh, driving the entire um, situation. And I think the ministry did well when it comes to you know, um, containment of the cases. We've seen Gambia register the few cases when it comes to our sub-region, uh, with reference from the West Africa Health Organization. I mean, we have only 24 cases at the moment, one dead and 10 active cases, 13 recoveries. So you would, you would suggest that, or one could suggest that, from, from the epidemiological point of view, one would suggest that uh, the, the, the frontliners in the Ministry of Health are actually doing their best, you know, um, um, having to tackle uh, some of these you know, dangers that comes from uh, the, you know, the, 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 the wall around. Now, COVID-19 started in my, my presence in Wuhan, actually. My university, a hospital in Wuhan, uh, Tongyi Medical University, is one of the top best universities in China. We started seeing cases coming around in the mid of December 2019 towards the end of December. But we actually didn't know uh, that it was COVID-19. I mean, we were attending to uh, patients and that was like a diagnosis of pneumonia. But on the whole, it was COVID-19. We didn't know it was COVID-19. So uh, you, you, will, you will know that COVID-19 is uh, it's a very serious issue, and that is one of the things that has really promulgated the Ministry of Health to take steps. We have uh, an incident command at KOTU that has a lot of um, um, operational staff being into logistics, being a rapid response, and all other uh, themes that are needed for, for disease containment. Great. I'm not an epidemiologist like you are, though. Okay, so but, so but, but, but <laughs> I, I believe strongly that yeah. there is no correlation between the fatality rate of the COVID-19 mm -hmm. and the lockdown. So do you think we still continue with the total lockdown? So what actually activates a lockdown is, is the fact that, I mean, these are advices that you will have from the scientific briefs of the World Health Organization. I mean, so they will tell you, uh, we, we need strategies that are going to really help curtail down the chance of uh, disease amplification in the community. I mean, the chance that the disease would, 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 would have to move very fast from one person to another. And part of the strategies that one could do uh, to activate at a level to make sure that uh, we, we curtail uh, the chance of the disease trans transmitting from one individual to another is like issues of uh, lockdowns, which have been proven to be, um, um, you know, uh, very, very much uh, efficient when it comes to uh, pandemics or outbreak containment. So, I mean, these are health uh, ad, ad, expert advices. It's not just uh, the feeling of thinking outside that, you know, we need to go on a lockdown and it is not politically associated, you know. So what is important is to know that the, the restrictive measures are part of uh, public health measures for containment of diseases anywhere in the world. Great, but we have seen uh, Sweden approaching the pandemic with a uh, tight, tough policy. They did not go on a total lockdown, yeah. they just trust social distancing principle. And we've seen the UK, Italy, where on total lockdown, and the fatality rate gets higher comparing to Sweden. And as stated, Sweden was advised by two scientists to adopt the strategy. I'm glad you said uh, they're the observing uh, physical distancing. Uh, Sweden is observing physical distancing. And you know, Gambia, a lot of people are not observing physical distancing. I mean, walk into our markets, walk into the public spaces. You know that physical distancing is not observed. So, I mean, the parameters that could be used in trying to advise for containment strategies would be different from country to country. Um, th this is due to a lot of factors. I mean, it could be how the society is driven. In, in, in Europe, in Sweden, in other parts of the world, I mean, physical distancing, social distancing is already there. Technically, it's already there. I mean, when somebody comes from abroad, we say that ah, these people did not talk to each other. You know, we, we know that those things exist in, in some parts of the world, like in Sweden. In Gambia, no. I mean, Gambia is a sociable society. And I mean, this is where you have in one household 10 to 20 or 10 to 12 people living together. 
I mean, this is a society where people are living from hand to mouth. Thus, they have to move out into the public space to get something to put on the table for their families. So the restrictive measures that could work for Sweden could, could probably not translate as restrictive measures that would work for Gambia. These are different circumstances that have um, different epidemiological characteristics. So the advice cannot be a matter of copy and paste. I mean, uh, we, we have to um, respond to issues, uh, especially local issues with, I mean, with local realities, not, not only believing that Sweden and America actually did this and we are also going to do it. No, it doesn't work like that. So from, from the uh, epidemiologic point of view, do you think uh, the president's recent action he had involved the powers bestowed, <coughs> bestowed on him by the constitution to extend the state of public emergency for another 21 days. Do you think this is a step in the right direction? Oh yes, so as an epidemiologist I would say yes, it's, it's a step in the right direction because it is, it is still going to help um, support the response efforts. I mean, that is our interest as people working at the Ministry of Health. We want to see, we want to break that chance of the disease uh, transferring or transmitting from one person to another. And yes, with the, with the next 21 days, um, I think I, I'm personally I'm, I'm very much glad with that because we know this period, for me this period, this last 10 days of the Ramadan in this country becomes one of the most troubled times for me as an individual. Uh, if, if, if you understand the uh, you know, pathogenicity, the virulence and you know, um, susceptibility of individuals when it comes to contracting diseases. Now, this is the moment when a lot of people go out in our public space, in our markets, you know, in the quest to buy clothes for the korite, uh, the prayers and all that. And this is the period when we have um, you know, a lot of Gambians moving in and around uh, to houses to, I mean, to go and uh, do some great things as we call it, salibu and all that. So I think the restrictive measures came at the right time. I mean, it, it couldn't come better than this time for us to actually help in the containment of uh, coronavirus in this country. The president did the right thing. I mean, that is the interest of public health. That is the interest of, of, uh, of, of, of any expert that will advise you in terms, of, in terms of public emergencies. Wait a minute, the president has assured us that he's going to issue another regulatory measures. But the past public emergency was kind of a total failure. So, with regard to the regulation. Yeah. And I believe strongly that instead of public emergency that is not regulated, could be meaningless. Yeah, so, so how often are you that the, this one will be regulated? The, the, the advice that we will give to the presidency is actually always to fine tune uh, restrictive measures. So when you impose restrictive measures, uh, you do, um, uh, you monitor compliance, public compliance is monitored. So w when you see that actually people in the society are not complying to the restrictive measures, you know, as per the prescriptions that you have forwarded, now you, you go back to the drawing board and fine tune those restrictive measures. because. You cannot impose restrictive measures, true, uh, that is going to affect livelihood. I mean, uh, public health is beyond just being healthy. Uh, it, it goes beyond that. I mean, you, you need to be mentally healthy. You need to be physically healthy. So uh, sociably, I mean, in the society, you need to be healthy in the society. So, so that's actually good. So, but however, the restrictive measures, uh, failure of the restrictive measures uh, coming from the last 45 days wouldn't actually only be measured as a default of the president. No, I think some of uh, the greater fault of it is from the public. It's actually people not adhering to the restrictive measures. And the moment people do not adhere to restrictive measures, I mean, these measures that were laid down by the president, it is, it is going to be futile. It is not going to uh, help in any way the response efforts. It's just going to be as, 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 as a normal claim of uh, whatever. So I, am, I, 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 for one, I am into the restrictive measures, uh, knowing, knowing what COVID-19 can do, knowing how the disease is able to transmit in the society. And Gambia have registered local transmissions. We have nine local transmissions out of the 24, local trans uh, 24 cases. What that means is there are people in the country who do not travel outside this country and have the potentials of, of transmitting this disease to other people in, 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 in their community. What is going to happen next if these restrictive, restrictive measures are not activated is going to be community transmission. I mean, it is going to be case clustering in the society, we will, cases will come in from environments where we will not know, at the level of the Ministry of Health, we will not know how to even go for containment measures. So this is the best time to actually cut down and deny the chain from getting us into community transmission. Critic says, when coronavirus hit the Gambia, 
it had already found some serious underlying issues like corrupt political class and very chronic ills with a very poor and de deteriorating health condition in the Gambia. And today we've seen the Minister of Health, mm -hmm. your boss, <laughs> speaking at the National Assembly and expressing his frustration over the bad corrupt system. Do you think the critics are vindicated? So the, the actually the, uh, the statement uh, or the, the ministers coming to the National Assembly to uh, actually whistleblow is, uh, well, one will see it as um, a two-sided coin. Actually, yes, it's important that the, the minister, the minister uh, on his own courtesy came to the National Assembly to whistleblow some of these behaviors that he believed is, is happening at the Ministry of Health. Do you think that's the right thing to do? But, 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 uh, so, uh, to be specific here for the, for, for, the, for the effort of communication is to tell you what the minister did mm -hmm. uh, could have been an in-house issue, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that, that is why he is the minister. That is why he's responsible to minister the affairs of uh, the, the health sector in this country. When, he's, when he knows that there are people in his, in his department who are fond of uh, doing corrupt practices, I mean, he has all rights to actually you know, call them out, or he has all rights to, to punish them. But then, um, we are in a very, I mean, Gambia is in a trying times at this moment. And anything that is actually going to bring in um, or this frustrate response efforts is going to be very bad for our system right now. Now, we are not in moments where we need to uh, just distort or you know, inject disturbing information into the, the public space that is going to uh, demotivate a lot of people uh, for, for COVID-19 fight. Well, actually, the, the minister went to the, uh, the National Assembly. I think that was a good one. It, um, I mean, his going to the National Assembly to, to show his frustration was, was actually, would not be bad to many. But actually, if you look at it uh, on the other side of the coin, I mean, he could have just um, addressed that issue uh, in-house and not necessarily going to the National Assembly to do that proclamation. No, in politics, do you think what the minister has done will backlash on him? Do you think there are accusations leveling against him? So I will put on, let me put off my cap for, for Minister of Health staff and put off my cap for, for you know, somebody that did what Whatever, politics. anything goes. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so, so when, when I talk about um, putting on my cap now for um, serving as a political analysis, perhaps I would say yes, because, I mean, it's a system. And when people are guilty of a system, when, when you have certain people that actually feel that um, the, I mean, the, the, uh, I mean, this minister is not fair to them as to, wait, wait, uh, as, wait, as, as wait. to what he said. Can we, can we be specific here? You're the yeah. communication officer, yeah. Ministry of Health. Knowing the frustration or the yes. condition in the ministry, how yes. are the staff reacting to the ministry's speech at the yes. National Assembly? So that is what I'm saying. Do you think something can spark from his own ministry, not from the public? Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to explain. But, but you know, in giving the response, I have to be, uh, I have to, I mean, I have to, give you an open mind. Now, what I'm saying is, when, you, when I talk as a staff of the Ministry of Health, m my responses probably would be different from when I talk as a, I mean, as a, as, as somebody who did political science, or some political science course at the, at the University of the Gambia. Now, let me talk to you first as somebody who is a staff of the Ministry of Health in regards to that. Right. Of course, there are, I know that there are people who would not be happy with the minister's statement. Um, because if you look at the interactions that you have, especially with some of my colleagues, uh, a chunk of them, a large chunk of them, are not happy with what the minister said. But if you also look at the other chunk, are actually happy with what the minister said. So it's a matter of 50 What's your 50. reaction? <laughs> but but my, my reaction to that is, is actually, I, I, I think the minister should have, um, well, I mean, he did that, that was good. He went to the National Assembly. Uh, I mean, I, I give him the salute as the minister. Uh, I think. Uh, he felt that that was the, the right thing to do, and, and actually I will salute his efforts for that. But I also remind him that uh, it is important to uh, address some of these issues internally. Um, you know, when it, it, it's, his, it's his own feeling, so I cannot measure how much you know, I will give him a score in, 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 in regards to this particular circumstance. But I think, well, it's, it's a matter of 50 50 issue because I, some chunk will not be happy with it, but some chunk will actually be happy with it. So I would, I would give my 50 to, I mean, <laughs> to, be, to be happy with what he did as the minister who is steering the affairs of the, the, the Minister of Health, and also giving him a reminder that, I mean, some of these things could be solved internally. Okay, Cole, before you get into 
Minister of Health, you have been a very fierce activist. Mm. You've got sponsorship from the American government to study in Ghana, leadership training in Ghana. Mm. And you've been speaking out against injustice, against bad governance in this country. And uh, what we see as an element of good governance mm. in a democracy mm. is the public speaking up against the corruption in the government. And also, the members of the ministries or the public officials coming out and blowing the whistle is a good thing in, 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 public, in, in, in governance, in a democracy. Right? Yeah. And knowing your personality, being that, you know, no nonsense, you know, kind of person, mm. very, very, very straight and conning, straightforward. Mm. How are you going to evaluate the, 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 the minister's, the minister's action? I, I think, I think I've, I've just answered that. I, I, I said, uh, if we, just a minute ago, I think that was what I was answering. I said, the, the coin is two-sided. Um, there are, I mean, there are, there's a chunk of the, the group uh, that probably I will say, uh, by, you know, by, my, by my opinion, Sovi, that would, would be happy with what the minister did. But there will be other chunk of the, of, of, of the, of the people in the health sector who would not be happy. So you, you don't want the person <laughs> to be personal, which I understand. <laughs> with, 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 yeah, I understand. <laughs> you don't want the person to be personal, I understand. Okay. Uh, you are a risk communication officer of the Ministry of uh, Health. Yes. And uh, we have seen concerns raised by people from the border villages mm -hmm. because they are scared, their lives are threatened. Because recently we've seen a new case mm. at the border in Nigeria. Well, what's, what's your strategy? Well, well, yeah. How so are you reacting to that? Yeah, so, their concerns? so we have, uh, let me remind you that we have designated border posts in this country. And but also we have undesignated border posts. I mean, these are border posts that are not identified. And Gambia and Senegal are so interwoven that we have a lot of porous borders. I mean, you can walk into either of these countries without you know, passing a security checkpoint, at, at, I mean, at, at, at some um, borderline communities. So it, it came to the attention of the ministry that actually there are uh, people that are smuggled into the country uh, from Senegal coming into the porous borders. And what we did actually was, was good. I mean, we activated uh, aggressive border surveillance going to um, post the, the public health officers, our public health officers into some of these hotspot borders. One example is at Ker Arro, where, I mean, the minister himself moved with, with, with some security personnel to uh, construct a, a health post at, at Ker Arro so that they would intercept anyone that is coming into uh, the country from that end. And yes, so the, the, the borders are closed, but the borders are open to Gambians to come back home. So Gambians have all opportunities, all, all rights to come back. But however, when they come in, they are going to serve the mandatory quarantine of 14 days. And during that period, they'll be in the hotel, of course. They will, not be, they will not have the chance to go back to their families. But then we also have a little bit of a problem that other nationals, being Senegalese and other nationals, still trying to smuggle into the country. So that might not be necessarily be the fault of the Minister of Health. I mean, in moments of disease outbreaks, in fighting pandemics, it is um, intersectorial. Uh, you know, efforts should be coming from every sector, being it the Ministry of Interior, being it the Ministry of Health, being it the Ministry of Information, to actually come together and fight, you know, in the front line. So the Ministry of Health cannot have all its staff at each of those porous borders. We need security. I mean, the, the Inspector General of Police could have, uh, you know, issued, you know, a huge number of people to actually, um, uh, be, you know, be mount, or mount a lot of other uh, guard post into some of those identified border posts now uh, that is on the line list of the Ministry of Health. So uh, we have that problem. I think that is one of the, the, the few challenges uh, the Ministry of Health currently faces. And that is also another problem uh, when it comes to uh, our efforts in the containment of diseases. Now you will see we have nine, nine local transmissions mm -hmm. uh, in, in, our, in our case classification, I mean in the epidemical case classification. So 20, 24, 9 of 24, the rest is all imported cases. We have more imported cases than local transmissions. Mm -hmm. So the moment, and if you look at the, the case hotspot of Senegal, our neighbor, uh, you, you realize that where the cases are coming from Senegal, Gambia is so much vulnerable, especially in our um, urban areas, I mean, in, in, our, in our rural areas to the, to the upper river region. So 
until we, we really moved ag ahead to activate you know, a more aggressive border surveillance, you know, more aggressive security surveillance at the borders, Gambia is, will be vulnerable to COVID-19. And until Senegal is free of COVID-19, we cannot celebrate that we are winning against COVID-19. Good. I've talked to some people who think that we have a very dysfunctional government whose leaders are too corrupt to head off this pandemic, mm. to control this pandemic. What do you think? So I would, I, 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 I think I'll find it interesting to, to, to talk about what, what corruption would mean uh, or what those people are saying uh, as regards to the allegations they're making against the, you know, the... the they're uh, referencing the, the, minister's speech. Yeah, what, what, what I'm saying is that I think what the minister said, I said it is, it is on the auspices of the minister to have said that. And I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't defer or, or agree either. Uh, as to what the minister did at an assassin. I think that is next level. Uh, so you for, think, for, you, think for me. You, you think the public do not have the authority to no, suspect no. that? I, 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 or, I, I'm not saying that. Or to suggest that. I'm, I'm not saying the, that. In fact, in fact, we are, we are proper officials who cannot head up the, the, the pandemic because instead of because they think some people that I talk to tells me that Buba, you know what's happening? I mean, when the coronavirus came, the, the government acted quickly not to prevent the virus but to make money out of it. So I think that is that is actually the wrong point for people thinking that the government is making so money out of, have for them? Of, out of They are making the wrong point. So thinking that the government is actually getting uh, any money uh, for this. I, I will speak on behalf of the frontliners, of, of the team that I belong. Now, before the COVID-19, we were still doing what we were doing to make sure that our, the public is safe, to make sure that we are there for our people. Now, you are a frontliner. Frontliner. Yes. We are talking about no, no, a, a, a political I, I, class. I, I, I understand, but I have to connect. <laughs> I have to connect the answers for you for, for also okay. give you a clear understanding of, of my point. So, the political class, being the presidency, being at the ministerial level, and all that, we know the moment politics is injected into any circumstance. I mean, you will have a lot of talks around it, and I think that's what is actually happening from a lot of critics outside to you know frustrate response efforts mm -hmm. of, of, of 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 how you call it the the, the political class mm -hmm. the, the president and the ministers but, but my feeling is that i think that that could be uh, a wrong idea or that would actually be very wrong of the of, of the presidency or the ministers to make money out of the fight against covid-19 it it for me it would be too illogical to actually think that way yeah because uh, as far as i know the blame has been lying <coughs> between the doorstep of the political class, the, the, the elite out there. People actually celebrate the hardliners, our, our, our first different line, that's the hell workers, right? There's this heated and disturbing stuff going on. Mm. People say, Minister of Health is like a house divided. Okay. There's some officials from different departments are not talking to each other. If that's the case, do you think that wouldn't curtail your efforts to, to head off this panic? Let me say, if that is not the case, then I think that's a serious allegation to the Ministry of Health. But if that is the case, it's also uh, something yeah, it's that not is... No, 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 no. You know no, what's no. going on? No, no. You know the, what's going on? The, the, the coin... You, don't, you cannot play devil's yeah. advocate. No, I'm not actually playing devil's advocate. What I'm saying is, I mean, I think I, I, I heard you very clearly. You said that you've heard from a lot of critics outside of the ministry mm -hmm. who are saying that there is division. Let me just say, say that there is division yeah. in the ministry. Yeah, ministry of Health is a house divided. So yeah, 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 you know, you have the yeah. you have the pro uh, minister and you have the anti minister. Whatever you put it. <laughs> right. So, but but what I'm saying is, I said if that is not the case, what if it's no no? I'll, I'll come to the, I'll come to the, I'll, I'll answer you. All right. I'll answer you, but I, I have to go. put it in context. There you go. If that is not the case, I think it's a serious allegation on the Ministry of Health. So, if that is the case, I mean, I also think uh, that is very wrong at the, at the, at the level of the Ministry of Health. It, it, without doubt, it's going to affect response effort. When, when people are not Obviously. actually together fighting you know, a common goal, sp speaking one voice, it will definitely, I mean, it will be, it will, it will be pub it will no secret that it is going to affect response. But what I'm, I'm not privy to some of those circumstances. I mean, yeah, I could work as a communication guy at the ministry, but I can't be privy to uh, everything that, that surrounds around mm -hmm. the, the ministry, especially with some of those uh, issues that could be uh, eye-sided issues uh, I'll have no interest in. But, but then I, I, think, I think we have a lot of 
generous, um, I mean, diligent young people right. uh, in the Ministry of Health. You know, I, 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 I celebrate, uh, a, a, I mean, a good number of people in the Ministry of Health. But let me also remind you, the minister said some few people, I mean, that is a statement he said. I mean, you couldn't, in every sector of the society, in every sector of the society, not even only the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. you go anywhere, you probably, if you do social gerontology or if you do uh, social certificates, you will understand that, I mean, those types of characteristics can ex exist in societies. I mean, a few number of people who will distract, you know, the, the, the goals of, I mean, uh, every team. So, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's a, uh, it could, you know, actually activate a debate to, <laughs> to talk about uh, you know, the fact that, oh, yeah, so, I mean, there is nowhere, perhaps, you would, you would go, uh, being at a uh, political class level, that you would have 100%, um, you know, people saying the same thing. All that. So I think the now minister you, was I, right. I he used, said, are you suggesting, no, 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 the are you suggesting said, what the people are thinking is, 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 is possible, although it's I'm not, not saying to your knowledge? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, what people are saying, if that is the case, is serious. But what people are saying, if that is not the case, is a serious allegation against staffs of the Ministry of Health. Okay, so what are the challenges that the Ministry is facing? So the Ministry is facing a lot of challenges, including challenges that you are just asking, all of these questions here. I mean, a part of challenges that the Ministry is facing. <laughs> well, <laughs> some, I, I'm just surprised <laughs> because, because to say, Umar, uh, I mean, is the uh, director officer of rumor manager, he's the man, manager of rumor. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, manages yeah I mean, rumor. yeah. I'm, he's here to dispel rumors, right? Yes, yes. So even if there's some element of truth in it, I'm sorry he's, don't dispel it. Yeah, but, but I mean, but yeah, regardless. The people also have their right yeah, to think whatever they think. Regardless. So, so um, I mean, rumor management is quite interesting for me, and I, I've, I've had a lot of more interesting things. Don't just dispel my uh, truth. No, no. Well, I wouldn't regard it as a truth until it's evident. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I think I know is part of the challenges the ministry faced currently, I mean, the, um, coming very professional now, is about um, the issue of face marks. Now, a lot of Gambians are using face marks, um, but I mean, there are prescriptions to face marks, but the Ministry of Health don't have actual uh, a policy now. I mean, this is in fact referenced on the, the National Situation Report. We've had to ask the citrus of the Ministry of Health. The other thing is, I think, the, the borders. The, 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 the Ministry of Interior needs to um, give him a resource support to the Ministry of Health and, you know, um, let this security personnel be planted at some of these porous border points to actually support the response efforts. And, and I think the public, also uh, bears a lot of boarding on the, on the soldiers and response of the Ministry of Health. Now, not everybody you would, you would say at the Ministry of Health is, is corrupt. Perhaps if that is what you think, that there are people that are corrupt in the Ministry of I'm Health. I'm not thinking. Okay, if that is what you think. I'm giving you the opinion. Oh, no. okay. Very well, but if, if that is the, uh, the thinking of the public, I think, well, the public deserves the right to think anyhow, uh, because we, you know, we live now in a very uh, big democratic your, space. Know your background in leadership. Yeah. You've been uh, the Secretary General of the Gambia College Students in here. Very well. You've been the Secretary General of yes, IVLP, yes. United, uh, United States of America Embassy, yes. right? And you've done a little sort of training, like I mentioned earlier. Yes. You know the traits of a good leader. Very well. Right? So do you think, if I'm managing Shahel, like I'm the director of political department, if I have some trainees or my junior staff who are doing some things that I describe as filthy things, I can go on with them. What do you think I should do? Well, I think, I think there is a, there's a lot of diagnostic procedures that could be used as a leader when it comes to uh, issues inside or within uh, addressing some of these administrative issues. And there are, there are certain things I, th I think administrators also want to um, uh, address that are not administrative issues at, at, at that moment. So if, if you are in that circumstance of being a leader, I think um, engagement is, 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 is one fundamental trait I have learned from uh, a lot of my, my interactions when I was in Ghana from uh, most of the, I mean, the, the leaders that are held in, in, in Ghana. I, I have the opportunity to talk to a lot of them. But I, one thing I see that is common with all of them is, is, is engagement, dialogue, I mean, to, to talk about issues. Because sometimes we might misconstrue uh, certain understandings of uh, what is happening, you know. So I think dialogue is one thing that I always advocate for, for so people to talk about issues. I, I put uh, to and, you, and, 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 I put to you, yes. uh, there are allegations against a minister that he's a dictator, he's not a good listener. Well, I wouldn't, is that a question you're asking? 
Or that is your own statement you're offering. I'm looking for your reaction to that. Well, if 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 they said he means he's a dictator, I wouldn't know. You've worked with him, so you know him better. I wouldn't know how they've measured what it means to be a dictator uh, in this circumstance, because all I know is the, the minister comes to work in the morning uh, and and goes home, and I, I don't have. I'm not privy to a lot of interactions with him at administrative level. I mean, I, I, I execute duties that are prescribed, you know, from his office, but but not but not any other no, thing that are personal making processes. No, 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 no. I, I do not I do not share a common platform with the minister when it comes to decision making of the ministry of health. But I execute decisions made at that platform. Cool. Uh, considering the fact that uh, the minister is still the CEO of the Banyan Hospital, right? Mm. And being a minister, do you think this is not limiting his performance? Well, I... And or I, do, you think, I do, do you think that there should be a delegation of powers here? Do you think he should remain minister and the power to be bestowed on another person? Or be given to another person? What's your suggestion? Well, well, well I, I, I think I am... Uh, it's quite interesting to hear that, that the minister is the CEO of uh, the Royal Victoria Children's Hospital. I, I, I have no idea if that is actually true. Uh, all I know is the minister is reporting to his office in Banjul at, uh, uh, at Quadrangle. It's, it's, it's a question. Yeah, but, but is, no. is he still managing the RVT? No, I don't think so. I, I'm not privy to information coming oh, from, okay. from, from, I mean, regarding that uh, minister serving as a CEO. No, no, I'm not, I'm not actually privy to that. I don't, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest an answer for that. That's fine. Great. Uh, so, what do you have to say to the people who are listening to you? Yeah, so regarding actually, your work, the risk involved in COVID in the pandemic. Yeah, so so public. so yeah, so my, my message to the public, the general public, is that COVID nineteen is real. I mean, let let us let us not actually uh, think that uh, it's it's a politics. I mean, it's a game of politics. No, uh, that is not actually the thing here. So. The frontliners are actually doing very well. We are working hard to make sure that every Gambian's life is safe. And we have sleepless nights. I mean, the, the incident management system is activated. The, I mean, the inc communication command 1025. We have sifters morning, afternoon, and night doing very hard to make sure that this country is safe. We have people at the border post risking their lives. We have people at the treatment centers risking their lives. We have people that are leaving their families, not seeing them for a period of two months, who are actually in the front line, as in the rapid response team, as in the contact tracers who are risking their lives. And, and, and we feel very bad. I personally feel very bad when people sit in this country and say, we don't have COVID-19. That is against the international health regulations. That is against any regulations by ethics, by practice, by principles of the World Health Assembly, of the international regulations, to actually announce that you are, you are suffering uh, an outbreak when that is not happening. The government will face more circumstances if we are to announce an outbreak when it is not true, then when we are to announce an outbreak and the supports come in. So I don't think uh, that is actually something good from the public space, for people to denounce that there is no COVID-19 in this country. I pray that we do not reach that stage of people believing actually, yes, there is COVID-19 in this country. We better thank the frontliners and better thank the British structure, frontline staff for doing a wonderful job. Thank you for coming back. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.